Welcome, friends, to the Play Guitar Podcast. I am Lee, and I'm here to help you become the guitar player that you always wanted to be. I hope you're doing good today. I am so happy to be here with you. It's been one of those days trying to (laughs) get this thing out. It's actually some nighttime podcasting we're doing today. Get it done. Get it done. Uh, Comments. Comments. I love the comments. 99% of the comments that we get. Actually, in podcasting, you don't get a lot of comments. Uh, Since the YouTube thing started happening and some of you are watching me on there and some of you are just listening to me in your car, 99% are people that have legitimate questions <laughs> or thanking me for helping them out uh, or, you know, telling me th- their story. Right. And I'm so happy that I'm able to help you. Uh, it's a, it's a good feeling. It's a good thing. But as the YouTube channel grows, <laughs> more and more content comments, excuse me, come in. And I'm, I'm hoping to get my, uh, jam-packed schedule together so I can be able to be in the comments more to answer more. I'm doing the best I can, but sometimes one comment (laughs) rises to the top, stands above all the rest. Uh, So I want to tell you that here's a recent comment that was left on one of my why they work lick videos. Now I'm not going to tell you who it is. Uh, You can go and look if if you want to, Um, but uh, here it is. Why bother with all the chords, keys, and scales? Why can't guitarists just play the notes that are on the tabs? So, I was confused by, <laughs> by this one, right? So, uh, I'm, I've, I've decided to take this one as sincere, right? So, so, someone is really just, you know, just starting out and they've, they're playing the tabs and, and they're, 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 they're farther along than they ever thought they could be. They're making sounds that sound like songs, which is a good thing. Uh, but, you know, this also could go the other direction. This could be a joke or it could be an insult. I don't know. But but just in case, I'm going to treat this seriously. And uh, I'm going to go into answering the last question first. Yes, you can. If you want to, you can just play the notes on the tab. And if that makes you happy, if that's all you want out of the guitar, that's great. I am excited for you. You have done something really well. You looked at the page or, or you looked at the, the tab, you figured it out, you put it together, you could hear the rhythms and you're, you're, you're listening to something that sounds like music. That's awesome. That's a great step. But there's a lot more to this than just that. If all you do is play the notes that are on the tabs, in the long run, you're at extreme disadvantage. And here's why. Number one, you're not going to be able to play along with other musicians. There is a, a, a language to music that uh, is important to it. There, there's, there are, are things that are played in these songs, in the songs where you've played the tab and you've you've gone to the fourth fret, the sixth fret, fifth fret, one after another after another, uh, there are some pretty fun things that you could learn that you could take ideas from one song and use them in lots and lots and lots of different songs. Um, It's a language, and uh, music is, to me, you know, all I can say is what music means to me. Music is the best part of music is the give and the take, the conversation. I love that part. If you're playing in front of people, if you're performing, and you're you're playing music and they're giving back to you, it's a wonderful feeling. And the conversation between the musicians, where you start off with one thing and you end up with something completely different that you never expected. Uh, those things the 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 uh the chords the keys the scales all of those things they're just words they're words for the concepts the the words for the tools that we use to make these things work to to be able to um to get these ideas across to someone else i, I interviewed uh, gretchen men oh i don't know a while ago 
<laughs> and one of the things that she said really hit home with me. And she, she put into words something that I had been thinking, but never was um, articulate enough to put them into words. And that, that was, you know, you're going to figure this stuff out on your own at some point. At some point, you play music enough, you'll you'll see how these chords and these scales and these keys, how important they are. And they match. You might not call them that. You could call them anything that you want. Right. But at some point, it, this is going to make sense to you. It might take you a very long time for that to happen. So there's two good reasons why you might want to understand the way music works and the reasons why these things happen. One is a, a time thing. Sometimes I've I've taught people who've been playing guitar for 40, 50 years and it didn't just come to them. Maybe it's just starting to at that point. Decades it takes for playing music and and not having a, a, a good way of understanding it. But the other thing beyond time is communication. It's being able to uh to take these ideas and quickly get your point across, quickly share some of these ideas, quickly say, hey, this is what we're going to, let's take it in this direction. And you can get creative. And when, the, when you have more than one person to, and you're, you're playing music and you have a way to classify each of these tools that we use to create music, uh, things happen. Very, very, very good things happen. So that last question was, uh, you know, why can't guitarists just play the chords on the taps? Well, they can. You can. Uh, but I would strongly suggest you ask why these things work. To come to this from a place of knowledge, not from following what other people do. Think about it. Someone had to write the tabs. <laughs> Someone had to sit down and figure these things out, whether it's a song or so. Someone had to sit down and listen to them and say, well, gosh, what, what is that? How does that chord go to that chord? And then once they had all of that together, then they wrote it down and put it into this little player piano scrolling disc of one of hole punches. Zero, one, two, three, fourth fret, seventh fret, this one from left to right on and on and on. Someone had to figure this out to be able to put it into tab. Who gets the best out of it, right? Who gets the, the most out of this process? Is it the person who's being able to play a song without really knowing why it works? Or is it the person who had to learn why it worked and then notate it in a way that other people could, could consume it? I would think it's the person who used their ears to figure the song out and who understood what the chords were and why they worked together. Uh, but that's me. That's me. You know, we all come to this from a different place. Uh, chords set the framework from what you work on. So I think of chords as blocks, kind of like buildings as you're going down the street. I've said this recently before. I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but it's it's worth repeating. I think of chords as, say, you're driving down a street and you have um, a certain distance. And then, at say, you're driving in front of a building, down the street in front of a building. I can think of that as a chord. You're going from, let's say, from left to right. You're driving down. And at some point, that building's going to end. What happens after that? Well, in a city, usually there's another building that's after that. And as you travel there, now you're in front of that one. So in the f at the first spot, you're driving down the street and you're driving in front of this building, the C. And it lasts for this long. Here comes the end of the building and we've got another one coming up. So now you're in front of the, the F building. <laughs> we were in front of the C building. Now we're back to the C building. And it lasts for this long. Now we're going to go in front of the G building. 
then we'll go back to the C note. This is your harmonic structure. This is the framework that you're playing over. Everything else has to either match what's going on here, the notes that are in each one of the chords, or not. So no matter if you know if these chords are major, minor, or what their names are, or what their relationships are, you're going to hear that that is the chord that's being played. And everything else that goes along with it, the vocal line, the bass line, the guitar solos, the fills, Everything else either matches those notes that are in that chord or not. That's important. So you hear that. You can hear if something is played that doesn't sound strong, it doesn't sound grounded, it sounds aimless. We hear, I hear that all the time, has an aimless sound. Those notes aren't matching. <laughs> They're not using those notes as strong notes. It's not matching the building that you're in front of, the chord, right? Uh, those notes are weaker notes. Your ear, whether you know the names or know how all that, all that works, those are weaker notes. Uh, and then when you hit a good note, right? You know, say you're playing a scale and you you stumble across the, the note that sounds great, and you go, "Oh, there it is!" And you play it a couple more times, right? Your ear hears that. Why does that note sound strong? Because it matches. It's this is all a matching game, right? I always talk about the the when I was a kid. It was a big deal. They would have granimals, right? So little toddlers can go in, they can get the, the lion shirt and then the lion pants and then the lion socks or whatever it is, and everything would match. They would learn how to match. This is a matching game. Uh, so our notes that can go, we can go in and out, up and down, uh, long notes, short notes, but either they match the harmony behind us, the chords, or not. This is our framework. And the, the different chords we have, that framework can get different emotions, different sounds from it. Uh, and, and also in those chords, in those frameworks, uh, we can break the rules too. We can have some chords that, that might not really sound uh, uh, typical. We might change some things. Uh, and then that becomes the new framework. It's a framework that breaks the rules a little bit. Then you have to reflect that in your vocal line, in your bass line, and in your guitar solos as well, too. Uh, so if all you're doing is, is looking at tab, these things are all happening. You may not be a part of that. You may just be thinking, well, I like fourth fret here. Then I like to, to play this up at the seventh fret and fourth fret, those things. But you're still listening. You're still hearing it. And... These, this is can this can only help you coming at this from uh, from a place of knowledge, right? So you're not just doing what someone else tells you to do all the time. This is so you can take part. I guess that's what I've been trying to. I'm in a roundabout way. Did you see where I, how I was going to here? I don't know. I'm, I'm making this up as we go. Taking part in the music is is a big part of it. There. Once you understand how these things work taking part. So, so the next one was, why bother with keys? Why bother with the key? Right? What's the key? Do you know what the key is? It's very simple. Uh, the key is the family, right? This is the, this is the, the, the set of things that are related, that it worked together. And we have the strongest of those things is the center of it, the tonal center. So if we have um, a bunch of chords, and then the first chord of the song and the last chord of the song uh, are an A, chances are the key of this song is going to be A. And the tonic of this song, the super note, right? The note that's above all others is, is probably the, the root of that chord, which is an A. So um, understanding where you're grounded in music. And so say you don't understand any of this, but say you're just, you just play the tab and you like it. And it's good. Um, if you played the tab and we're missing the last couple of measures of it, what would it sound like? If you were playing all the way up to the end, but you didn't quite get to that last chord, maybe the, you, you printed it out and the printer ran out of ink or, or something, or maybe it just got lost. What would it sound like? It would sound incomplete. 
right? It wouldn't sound finished. Um, it doesn't reference the key. Uh, the key is is the strongest of the strong, and it's the relationship of the chords. Uh, if you ever heard the, the relative major and minor, how these how these things all work together, they're very important. So chords are certain chords uh, are family members in the keys, right? The key is just the structure, the things that typically work together. Uh, the chords set the framework. Which exact ones are we going to play? We're going to play this one, this one, this one, and this one. We like to give them numbers. The four chord goes to the five chord, goes to the one chord. You might not have to, to name those chords. You could hear what they sound like, and maybe you come up with a whole other language for that. The last thing was, why bother with scales? Why even bother with scales, right? Scales. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of, you know, if, if you really want to know the fretboard and know your scales all over the fretboard, uh, my coaching students know that it takes a good chunk of work, a good chunk of time to be able to really know those. And do you ever really know them that well? I've been playing them for since 1982. <laughs> and um, I could still know them better. I know them pretty good, though, now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, so, so, so what is, what, what's the scales? What's the big deal of the scales? Well, we talked about the buildings, right? The, the, the chords are, you're driving past a building and you're in front of that for a certain amount of time. Then you go to the next building. Those are the chords. Uh, this, the scales are the line. What a saxophone player plays, one note after the next note out of, after the next note. Uh, they're the bass line. One note after the next note after the next note. Some are strong, some are weak. They go up, they go down. They, they, uh, they jump distances. They deal with something called intervals, distances between notes. Right? And, and they... As they're played over top of our harmony, our chord structure, they will either match those perfectly or have varying degrees of weaknesses away from those notes, right? And that gives you the two things in music that we, we love, tension and release, right? Tension and release. Repetition is a form of tension. <laughs> uh, and keys... And, and, and resolving to things, strong notes, weak notes, they're all, it's, all, it's all connected together. These are all things that you don't have to understand music theory or how music works to, to hear and to feel. Um, so these notes here that we, we put together, the groups of family, th these are our tools that we use to create. We use the notes from the key to create things. Number one, we create the chords from our scales. That's where they come from. So the notes that are in the scales are going to create all of the different chords that we play over if it's a, a standard inside sounding song, if it doesn't break the rules. We can break the rules. But usually we're going to have things that come from the scales. Right. And once you understand these groups of notes and how to use them and how to create melodies from them, uh, how to take the ideas that you learn from tabs and make them your own. And uh, just think about it. Think about if you learned. Think about if you learned Paradise City from Guns N' Roses. Right. Uh, and you're a Guns N' Roses fan and you're just happy to learn the song. But think about all the music. The, all the ideas that are in that song that you could take and play in a totally different style of music and create something that's completely new, right? Or take the, take the feel of that song and use it, take another song and maybe take the feel of one song and play it on another song and see what it comes up with, right? Take a little bit of control over the music instead of being uh, shown and told what to do. So th that's my answer. <laughs> this podcast episode is an answer to a comment that would have that I think I needed to work out with you guys here today 
and gals. Uh, I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate it. Hang on. What do you think about this? Should we bother with all this stuff? Is it worth it? Or should we just play the tabs and be happy? <laughs> That's what I like. Uh, but, but for the person who left this comment, and if you're sincere, you're sincerely asking why, I hope I helped you today. And for the, for the, the average listener, there's no average listener. We all have, the more I meet people who listen to the podcast, the, <laughs> the, 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 the more, um, special each of our frustrations are <laughs> that it's, uh, I used to think everything was common and now there's, there's, everyone has, the more people I meet, the more I realize that they, um, the ways that we get to these ruts are come from different places anyway. Um, but I, I, I hope I helped you with this today. And it is something that, uh, is, is a good question. Why should we do this at all? I always say, ask why, ask why, why should we do this at all? Why can't we just play the tab? You can, uh, but I hope I made the case for what, for why knowing a little bit about how music works can help. And one thing that my job is, is there's a lot of music theory out there, the understanding why. And then there's a lot of playing over here. There's a lot of tabs and, and kind of mindless learning of music and not really understanding how to take control of it. So you got all the information over here and all the doing over here. And there's not much bringing them together. And so one of the things that I, I share with my students is it's my job. My job is to make sure you're not like your, your music theory is up here, but you're playing. You can't play any of it. Your playing's down here. I want us all to be in a straight line because once your music theory and your it doesn't you don't have to call it music theory, the, the understanding why something works and being able to apply it if they're at the same level. Then when you knew, then you've got your, your um, skills, your basic skills in order. And it's very easy to move up to the next level and to the next level. You start experiencing goals moving faster and faster and faster. When you say, say your, um, your playing is up here, but you don't understand what you're doing. That's called an anchor. The, the, the not understanding what you're doing is going to hold everything back and you're going to stay right where you are. And the same, the other way around. So say if you, you've taken music theory courses and you've read books and, and you really like it and it's great and you like to talk about it, but when you play the guitar or play whatever instrument that you play, none of it shows in your playing and you don't know how to make it happen. That's an anchor, right? I see this from, from outside and I say, well, wouldn't it be great if they were both at the same level and you were learning, I think they call it just in time learning learning the things that are appropriate for what you're playing. So then you have the skills to move to the next level, move to the next level and move to the next level, move to the next level. So when you finally got up to that high point of the music theory, your playing is right there with it. And then all sorts of good things happen. So, well, so I, thanks for listening to me. <laughs> thanks for helping me work this one out. And I, what I'm going to do is in the comments for this, I'm going to put a link to this video for this, this, this person. And thank you to this person. I'm going to, I'm going to assume that this was a sincere question. Um, okay. Make sure you have a good idea of where you are with the guitar, where you are with the understanding, where you, what are the, all the important things that have to work together to help your guitar playing move forward? Well, I've got something for you for that. It's my high performance guitar scorecard. I still have it up there. I'm going to take this away pretty soon. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's a quick assessment. You can take it in five minutes uh, and you give yourself a, a one to 10 in, in a bunch of different areas. Uh, and it gives you a visual reference of how you're doing and what things need to move up. Uh, and so you can still get that before I take it away. This will be the last time I mentioned, and I'll probably be removing this very soon. Um, but it's over at playguitaracademy.com forward slash high performance guitar scorecard. But don't type all that out. Just go to the, to the link in the description and just tap it. 
<laughs> and it'll take you to the download page and you can just sign up for it and download it, take it real quick, and you have a good idea of the things that you might need to work on to move uh, move the goalposts a little bit, okay? I appreciate you hanging out with me today, letting me work through this stuff. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. That's a wrap. Thanks for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. Make sure to hit the button below to subscribe to the show. And if you have benefited from this podcast, please leave a favorable Apple Podcast iTunes review. It's the best way to make sure we get this very valuable content to more guitar players around the world. If more help, structure, and results in your guitar playing sound good to you, become a member. Play Guitar Academy is here. Join the world's most exciting and carefully planned guitar system. Together, we'll build your online home base for guitar. Plus, you get all of the tabs, backing tracks, and guitar profiles from all of my Lick videos out there every week. You can dive into them and uh, get all that information. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye-bye.